Welcome to Dynamic Life Perspectives, Guidance for a New Age. We're going to have a good time figuring out who you are, what you really want, and how to get there. Together, we're going to find your heart. Now here's your host, the Reverend Rob Lee. Yep, 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 yep. So okay. if anybody who starts watching the beginning, if they want to see a blooper, they got to keep watching. <laughs> All right, we'll tag it at the end. <laughs> very good, very good. So, good afternoon. How are Hello, you? Hello, Reverend Rob. How are you? I am awesome. If I was any better right now, I'd be twins. So You know what? Yeah, I might be floating also, right? Yeah. <laughs> You know, the thought of me being twins, nah, God said, I'd never do that. I don't know if this, if your state could handle two of you. I don't know either. I know my parents could. <laughs> and my dad even said that. You know, I had, supposedly I had at one time, my mom had three stillborn births of boys, all boys. They're all far enough along to know they were boys. Mm -hmm. And two before me, one after me. And my dad said, God was good. Because with me in the mix, <laughs> if you had a brother after you, we would have done this completely different. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, God was good to you, you know, because uh, he wasn't going to do this to you twice. You know? Exactly. Exactly. So um, can you hear the whiny dog at the door or should I let him in? I don't hear it. Okay. But then again, my hearing is not the most, you know. All right. We're just going to think. All right, Scoobs. Come on in, buddy. He has his workstation. Okay. This is his workstation. Oh, there you go. So. <laughs> and we'll just edit this whole little section out or whatnot. Or we'll, 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 <laughs> I don't know. We'll figure it out. Well, hey, I'm really excited about today's conversation. Me too. This is a big part of the work that I do. And... Right. More and more people are noticing this and having these symptoms, if we're going to call them a symptom. Okay. Um, but the question becomes is, what do you do about it? I hear you. So do you want to tell people what we're talking about today? We're talking about the big E, empath. <laughs> empath and all that. And I believe if people will check out the first show, they'll find out why this became a topic. I've yes. talked about empaths for a long time. And at one point, I really believed it and everything that you can, you know, do this or whatnot. Now, I'm, as we get older and I'm adjusting some of my beliefs and what I do and things, I do think some of this is possible, but I don't think it's what we believe it to be or we want it to be. And so that will get started. And that's what's leading up to this, this hour of, you know, Spiritual. What we do. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> so tell people what you do. You know, help, and because again, it's like, okay, well, and what you do. I know you. No, basically, I, I, I am blessed to be able to manipulate energy. Okay. Go back to the root of everything, and everything is energy. The energy has frequencies, it has vibrations, it's fluid, it has no boundaries. You walk into an office and you open the door and the tension's so thick you can cut it with a knife, right? That's not yours, it's their energy. So what do you do about it? And energy can work. So when I work with people many times i'm dealing with nefarious and negative energies and entities right. an entity is an energy you and i are energy so we remove i remove those with the client i it's very important when i work with somebody that they can see what's happening too right because i could say oh your dead grandma standing there right how do you, and i could give you enough truth to get you to believe me but if you can see it yourself we rectify the situation. We close the door. That's key. You never leave anything open. So that's essentially what I do. But manipulating any energy can also be removing stuck energy within the body. 
every dis-ease is simply stuck energy. How do you get it out of the body? So that's it in a nutshell. That's that's cool. And you know, I believe in the energy. I believe in different things. But and and people, are like, we can't believe in energy and still believe in God. Yes, I can, because we are. We know we are made up of atoms, which all have a little ball of it. We're millions and trillions of balls of energy rolled into one. Somebody can use a a frequency checker. Um, some type of meter, and each one of us is putting off different frequencies or whatnot, and those frequencies change with our mood and things like that. And people have a hard time understanding. With our human eyes, we can't see everything as it actually is a lot of times because, in truth, there is so much energy and so much frequency, nothing is standing still. Everything has a slight vibration or drive to it, and that's where these energies come from. And that's why we have to be careful about what we're tuning into. So you know, you're so right. And real quick about the energies and what we can't see. We didn't used to believe that viruses and bacteria existed until when? Until the microscope was invented, right? Correct. Now all of a sudden it was important to wash our hands. So that's just one way, and our technology is getting better and better because every now and then we'll see out on the internet or something, somebody who died in a car accident, you can see the soul energy leaving the body. That is pure energy. Right. And and that's where, so if you don't mind, for people, let's, um, I've got a thing here I'll share, and I'll read it real quick. Uh, it's a paragraph about kind of, and I think it describes empaths and what goes on with empaths. Pretty good. Not it's saying I believe really good. with everything here, but let's give people a definition. Is that okay? Absolutely. And I, I encourage everybody to listen to every word of this because it's really good. Absolutely. Absolutely. Empaths are people who sense and absorb Shakti, also known as Prana Shakti, or Prana, are thought to be subtle energies emitted from people, places, and animals. In a nutshell, Empaths go much farther than simply empathizing with someone. They are said to actually absorb the energy which is created by sadness, distress, depression, misery, and suffering into their own body, mind, and soul. In some cases, the absorption of energy is to such an extent that the empath suffers not only in his or her mind, but also in their physical body in which paranormal signs and symptoms can manifest. Although we're reminded on rare occasions that joy is also an energy that can be absorbed, being an empath is commonly and understandably associated with mental distress and depression. That's because the world is filled with misery not joy. And when we empathize, empathize with someone, we're not referring to rejoicing with them, but rather to suffering with them. And some say that being an empath comes natural, while others say it can be acquired. And that's going to be pretty much where we go with that and what's going on. And, you know, in doing some review and thinking about it, when we talk about, I firmly believe that we have a lot of people confusing perception with being an empath. Absolutely. I think we have a lot of people wearing an empath tag and what drives me nuts. And if you think about it, how many times has somebody walked up to you and went, I'm awesome today because I'm an empath. I've just absorbed so much good energy around me. You know, if I was any happier, I'd be twins. You know, that whole thing we started to show off with. Nine times out of ten, they start out by going, oh, you'll just have to forgive me. I've been absorbing all this negative energy. And you know what? That's a choice. That is a choice. And we have to learn how to absorb and what not to absorb. Like you talked about walking into a room and picking up on that energy. A lot of these people are not empaths, but they're very perceptive. Learn to read the room. Right. And we can pick up on that. 
There is a reason we do that. And I do believe that being perceptive and being open and feeling what's going on around you was given to each one of us at birth. But we were never instructed to absorb negative energy. It doesn't even make any sense. You know? So that's where I get started with this. And then I'll go into why these... Well, you're bringing up a good point because when we're so busy... And there's a lot of negativity out there on the planet. Let's just be honest. Especially nowadays. You think? A little bit. And it feels like it's getting worse and worse, right? Right. (laughs) So... And it can be a perception. There's many theories, et cetera, about that. But the ability to keep your energy, the ability to not absorb your energy, it affects our ability to have true free will. God gifted us free will to make choices, to have actions and reactions when things happen to us. But when you're so busy absorbing all of this negative energy, it it starts to affect our mind, our body, our soul. What do we do about it? That's the million dollar question. I'm really excited about this because we're going to be talking a lot about solutions. How do you stop that? Right. And yeah. So, I mean, that's what, and that's one of the first things that I have to tell people. They come up and go, I'm an empath and I just feel drained all the time. If you really feel you're an empath, you have a responsibility to yourself, your loved ones, those around you to learn how to protect yourself from absorbing and bringing things home. Don't ask your family to tolerate you because you're an empath. You have a responsibility to bring home good, positive, be in high vibes. So there's a protection that God offers. And I want people to understand, I'm not saying that God tells us, and the Bible tells us, we are to be empathetic with other people. But it does not say absorb their energy. Absorb their baggage, right? (laughs) It it absolutely does not. Listen to them. Understand them. And, you know, we talked last week about some, some people don't understand what listening is, okay? And a lot of times if you will stop judging and thinking of every word coming out of somebody's mouth and listen, you can empathize with them. And that will help you help them. But you're not going in, absorbing their energy, bringing their baggage home with you, needing a cleansing. Because once you open yourself up to negative energy, you, you don't know what you're going to get. And it spreads like a virus. Yes. So, and, and we owe it to ourselves karmically to not allow ourselves to abuse ourselves this way. Correct. So the, the martyr syndrome, like, oh, this is what I do. Da, 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 da. No, you're abusing yourself. But having said that, knowledge is power because we don't often talk about how do we stop doing it. Correct. And I, that's a really important key. We're going to go through a lot of strategies today on how to disconnect, how to do those types of things, because this is important. And when you're look, when we we're looking at people, you ha- you're working with somebody, and you, how many times do you see people who are empaths that are suffering from depression, anxiety, brain fog? These are real conditions. They are, and they're using that as an excuse to not take action to move on. When Absolutely. The first thing I teach them is you have to build a bubble, build a shield, and you have just opened yourself up for any negative thing that's floating around out there. So you have to take responsibility that this is not what we were meant to do or anything we were meant to be. We're supposed to empathize with people. God gave us that gift to be able to stop put my feelings for us aside for a little bit and let me really feel where you're coming from. And and that's the key is, you know, because again, um, you know, in, in Colossians, it, you know, put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved bowels of mercy and kindness. All right. But when we get around all this negativity, 
our kindness, our everything goes away, and then we want to make excuses for it. And we start to get our, we start to make ourselves sick also. Yes, very much so. And, yeah. you know, and let's talk about energy for a moment. Okay. When throughout the history of this planet, regardless of culture, regardless of language, the handshake is universal, right? Yes. When we shake somebody's hand, what we're doing is we're feeling their energy. How does that person make you feel? Are they trustworthy? Do you want to do business with them? Do they feel weak? Do they feel strong? Do they feel narcissistic? Do they feel like a, you know, a limp fish kind of thing? So handshakes are very important. And if we can stop with that and stop the energy at our wrist, we don't absorb it into the body. Right. The same thing can be said for a hug. How many of us have, you know, maybe gone to the grocery store and we meet an old friend and we're like, oh my God, how are you? And you leave and you feel energized, right? You two are feeding off of each other's energy and you're leaving feeling joyful, right? Your energy was synergistic in a positive way. But how many times have you run into somebody and you see them and you're like, oh my God, I'm so exhausted. I don't know what happened, right? They're draining your energy. They're taking it. So we want to go shields up. One of the ways that if you feel like you're absorbing somebody's energy, very simple tool, get up, leave the room, go use the restroom, but simply pour cold water on your wrists. It breaks the connection. It's very simple. It's free. And you can do it anywhere, anywhere there's a restroom or a sink or something like that. And just stop there. And you're going to say, this is not mine. And if the energy keeps coming back to you, you can literally say, and you can do it in your mind's eye because you don't want to be weird washing your hands in the public bathroom. <laughs> um, this is not mine. You can even say return to sender. If somebody keeps giving you their negative energy, you don't need it. No. You're not, you, and and you're, they're causing you harm. And when you can stop somebody from harming you, you're helping that person create positive karma or at least neutralize the negative karma. I agree. And when somebody, if you're repeatedly getting negative energy from somebody, and, it, and I note the word repeatedly, okay, then you need to examine the value of that relationship in your life. It's not for us to drag everybody into the light. It's up to us to show people there is a better way. But if you continue to be a negative nanny, a negative Nelly, whatever it is, you know, one of those people with this doom and gloom crowd around you, you will actually be more helpful to them to say, you know, I understand and I get it, but this has become your choice of a way to live. And I just can't be part of it. I love you. Let me know when you get that taken care of. And I'd love to hear from you. But we owe that to those closest to us to protect ourselves from that, not embrace it. Yeah, and we can do it in a compassionate way. Absolutely. Absolutely. I was telling people, you know, in, in, uh, in meetings with family for addicts, you need to put your son out. You need to put them on the street. Well, that means I don't love them. No, I can tell you to leave my life, but I love you with all my heart. But if this is your path that you're choosing, I am not going to condone it. I'm not going to help you live it. And I pray to God, I'm going to do the best thing for you. Go live your path. But I cannot be part of that. And I always remind people about the old Jim Croce song, you know, if you're going my way, I'll go there too. And we need to understand, we need to stop getting on other people's paths and live our own path. And those that want to follow down our path, welcome along. If you Absolutely. Walk. And while you're deciding if we're walking on someone down someone's path, you got to realize is it my circus and is it my zoo, right? Yeah, exactly. Not my circus, not my monkeys. Yeah. You know? Now, and by the way, you're talking about, honestly, it's true spiritual courage. Absolutely. It's this, the ability to tell somebody, you know what, this relationship 
to me right now in my life is detrimental to me. I love you, but I have to make changes. And this is what I need. It's not narcissistic. That takes true spiritual courage because I guarantee you that's not an easy conversation to have with anybody, right? No, it's not. And, you know, sometimes that may be the first time anybody's ever hit that person with the truth mm -hmm. of your mental stability right now. The energy you're putting off is not healthy to me. Yeah. You know, because we all talk about the energy vampires. They take your, they suck the life out of the room. They suck you dry. Everything else, we've all been around them, okay? And, you know, one of the things I remind people about being an empath is when I'm setting up to do uh, coaching, counseling, therapy, whatnot, even when I was doing licensed, you know, mental health counseling, you know, nobody walks into a mental health counselor and the mental health counselor goes, wait a minute. I'm absorbing your energy, and I know that your parents punished you too hard, and you were molested. Did I get it right? You know, that doesn't happen. And you know why it doesn't happen? Because my job is not to tell you what's wrong with you. It's to help you find out what's wrong with going on in your brain, in your life, so you can say, Oh my God, and have an epiphany, all right? And now I can help you find ways to fix it. It's not our job or otherwise all the counselors would become empaths. And, and you know, but that's not what we're supposed to do. So in many ways, a lot of these people that are going, okay, I understand. I feel everything you're going through without letting the person drill down and find it themselves. You're actually doing them a disservice. Because you may be missing the mark. It may not be their parents. It may have been that late night sneaky uncle. It may be something they did in their own life that they haven't, they've covered up. It's either in denial or, in, you know, all of that, those things, those self-defense mechanisms we have that they're not able to face what's actually going on within themselves. Because once you figure it out for yourself, now, you can know from this point, it's my choice. And, you know, that's what I call detached compassion, right? I can be with you. I can be compassionate, but I can't go over your waterfall with you. Exactly. If I do that, then I'm not helpful. And that's an art form. And I think it's an art form that everybody should be able to develop. That simply you can stand back and, you know, and trust me, in my field, I mean, I hear stuff that make the angels cry on a daily basis. I'll bet. Right? I'll bet. And especially when I'm dealing with satanic ritual abuse victims or super soldiers or it's just it can get really awful really fast. And I never know where it's going to go or come from. So that that concept of detached compassion is super important. And when you practice the detached compassion, you start well, when you start to learn how to practice it you're actually becoming less of an energetic sponge at the same time. Exactly. Back to what you're saying. And, and then you can become more helpful. I have a lot of people that I work with or talk to or whatever that talk about being this wonderful healer. Well, they're just absorbing everybody's junk. And you don't want that. <laughs> you want to be able to stop that. You're a human dumpster where, okay... But the problem is most people don't understand you're not removing that feeling from them. You're only taking it for a little bit and then you have to learn what you're going to do with it. But three days later, this thought process, these energy patterns, they're going to keep going. They're going to repeat. They're going to come back. You're not helping anybody with no. them. In fact, I, I would be... <sighs> remiss not to say you may be enabling them right I hear and I think everybody I hear wants to be an enabler and this is where family patterns happen too right yes family patterns are generational 
So look at your family patterns. I encourage everybody out there to look at your family patterns. What are the positive ones? What are maybe the neutral or negative ones or detrimental ones? And what can you do to shift it? Because when you can shift your negative or detrimental family patterns, you get your life back. You get to break free. Not only that, but you get to help your other family members in a subtle, energetic manner. Right. They and, may not know what shifted, but they feel it. And and you know what? A lot of people, I hate to see them be 50 plus, 60 plus before they figure some of this out. And that is, it's okay. Nobody can stab us in the back like family can. And a lot of this comes from those people that we have brought closest or we have been told we have to keep in our lives. I remember at one point, my dad and I just, our relationship was so hot and cold, okay? Um, and at one point, we went like two years without speaking to each other. And my, an, an aunt, that's Southern, my other, other people will be an aunt, Mm -hmm. But an aunt was going through some things with their grandkids and they weren't being allowed to see them. When my dad and my thing, I never forbid him, mm -hmm. but he stopped. And I saw him like doing this whole drama based at one of my son's soccer games, watching from a distance. And I walked over, what are you doing? I said, just because we're mad at each other. That's your grandson. He needs his granddaddy. Come on over. Well, I didn't think you'd let me see them. And, you know, I said at that point, I said, see, now I'm not going to own this. And something happened to me in that picking up his energy and everything down. And I was able at that moment to shut it down. And I went, you know what? I immediately began to have pity for him because I'm like, this must really suck. To have allowed yourself to believe stuff that's just not true. So you've absorbed it. You got caught up in everybody else's family crap when we don't have that. Yeah. And, you know, at that point, I went, you know how we were talking about earlier, not my circus, not my monkeys? Mm -hmm. That saying hit me in the face right there. It goes, you don't have to play this game. Right. And I looked at him and said, Dad, I love you but I'm not going to have that in my life. Yeah. Let me know when you figure it out. And my whole, my whole walk changed at that point, how I look at people, how I look at different things or whatnot. And that's the reason my aunt that was just here, we were having the conversation about the ability to be able to learn to step outside. Somebody that's empathetic, truly empathetic, and you might would call them an empath. What makes them very good at empathy is they are actually able to shut their feelings off for a moment and trade places. I don't take on their energy anymore, okay? But I can feel in my heart their pain, their agony without taking that on. And I can say, let me pray with you. Let me help you. Do you want anything? But if they say, no, I just need to talk to somebody. Okay. But now they're coming back. I need to talk to somebody again. Stop. Just talking is you trying to bombard me with your, I'm not, I'm not your, I'm not your emotional dumpster. Mm -hmm. And whenever you're ready to do something about it. Right. Let me know. <laughs> so. Well, and that's the hard part too, because, you know, I have to wonder people who are these, I'm going to call them, the, you know, we all come into life with a certain amount of baggage, right? Right. Some people come in with a cute little um, handbag and some people come in with a semi trunk, right? A baggage <laughs> and everything in between. Some people may have the whole train. I don't know. Um, but it's how we deal with it and how we can learn to unload it and unpack it in a constructive way. So that's a big part of it. And when we, when we're with somebody who's toxic, because we all have those personalities in our life, they offer us great lessons. I call those karmic tools. Right. <laughs> learn what to do different, learn what to do, you know, better, or whatever. But one of the things we can do if we're finding ourselves connecting into somebody's negativity 
we are all connected to each other with through Aka cords. Think of the Aka cords reside in the solar plexus right here. Right. And think of Akashic records. These are these silver gray cords that connect us to every person, place, or thing. This is our soul's history. This is our soul's record keeper. And as we're doing this, we can disconnect that from the negative ener negative person energy. And it's a very simple visualization technique. But visualization techniques are practice. They are a spiritual practice. The more you practice, the more easy and more proficient. I'm so sorry. That would be Scooby if you hear him. No, I don't hear him. Um, it's okay. But like I said, I'm happy to have any. So. <laughs> okay. I'd have to let him out a minute. The more we practice, the easier it becomes. And one of them is you're going to visualize yourself and pick your pick your tool. Maybe it's a selenite wand. Maybe it's the sword, you know, a sword of an angel to disconnect those aqua cords. But here's what you do next. You don't just throw them off. You never want to litter the ether because everything is energy. Now you got all this stuff spewing out of this cable. Hand them off to an angel request the presence of an angel when you do this. I hereby request, you know, pick your favorite angel. Maybe it's Archangel Michael. Maybe it's just an angel to help you, you know, move forward. There's many different angels out there. When you disconnect those Aka cords, request the angel take them. And the angel will take those cords and plug them in. So now everybody on the other side of your Aka cords are now connected to an angelic realm. Okay. And many times, sorry, many times. That one I heard. It's okay. That one you heard. All right. We're going to pause this for a moment. I'm okay. so sorry. Out. Usually it's not a problem because I'm home alone. <laughs> okay. okay. Hold on while we're pausing this. Just a second. What's up? Uh, um, I called the shop on the way home. Mm -hmm. uh, they're expecting my transmission to come in today, so hopefully the next day or two they might come. Oh, that'd be awesome. Cool, 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 cool. Gillian and I are going out to meet Miss Linda. We're having dinner with her tonight. Uh, we're going to River Rocks. We're not going inside. We're going to the docks. You look tired. How are you feeling? I know you weren't feeling good. Better. Okay. It's slowly getting better throughout the day. Just... Okay. Throat, All right. Less hacking, less coughing. Okay, good. All right. Well, I love you, but that way you know what's going on. All right. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Perfect timing. So, yeah. I'll do this across the screen. So, I so can you, yep. I do the same thing. <laughs> All right. So, you were talking about. Um, Aka cords. Aka cords and disconnecting Aka cords. So when we can disconnect our Aka cords to a negative person, it helps free us up of our energy. If you, I personally will just disconnect all of my Aka cords because I don't want to have to figure out how to sift through them to figure out what's what. Right. The good ones always grow back. Okay. Just know they grow back. And the angels are probably one of the most underutilized human resources out there and angelic realms are here to serve humanity they transcend religions they transcend everything but they can't assist us unless we ask it's a spiritual jurisdiction issue so request the help of angels if you're dealing with a let's say you're at this family reunion and you just know you're in for just a Grand old time, not right. Uh, yeah, one of those family reunions. Huh? Oh God! You're going to and requesting angelic help is again a spiritual practice. The more you practice, the easier it is. The more that show up. Angels are karmically earned. They cannot violate spiritual laws, but you can simply say, "I am requesting a team of angels." Give them your number. I want five. I want a thousand. Whatever it is, I'm requesting a team of angels to be with me from the moment I leave my home. They're, I want them to follow me to this party and then to, until and stay with me to guide my words, to protect me, to remove anything negative coming at me. 
until I return home that evening. And if you have teenage kids, this is a great tool. Absolutely. You know, I find it great when you talk about it takes practice. Because people nowadays, no matter what you're teaching, they're looking for the magic eight ball or the magic answer, do this three times fast. And you will, poof, everything's gone. gone. And, you know, one of the things that we learn is that we are to experience trials and tribulations. And we're supposed to welcome them because we are supposed to be learning from them. This is lessons in life. How are we going to get ahead if we don't learn? And one of the things I find out is when I'm working with people on different things, and you know what I find out? I'll, I'll be honest with you. Guys are the worst, okay? I see guys as being more egotistical because I'll give them some silliness, like some of the mindfulness exercises we talked about last week. And they'll be like, I'm not doing that. I'm like, but you're by yourself. What does it matter? You don't even want to look at yourself in the mirror? And that becomes a thing where pride goes so far. We need to practice to feel good. Yeah. We need to practice turning off CNN and Fox News. Guess what? They're filling my head at dinner time when I'm supposed to be open to family nourishment and fulfillment and positive energy and, and being replenished in spirit of God with the Holy Spirit, whatever you want to say. And what do we do? We're turning on Biden did this, Trump did that. Stop. It takes practice to be able to go, you know, I don't care what anybody did today. Well, and what can we do about it? Right? What can I do about it? And that practice is a key component to spirituality and, and really good soul health because I see a lot of spiritual bypassing, meaning the McDonaldization of spirituality. Oh, my God. Thank you. That's a great way to put it. That is a great way, and I'll relate to that in a minute, but go ahead. You are on a roll. I love it. So when, we, when we're when we doing that, we're not helping ourselves. We're looking for a cheat sheet. We're looking for the cliff notes. Your soul is eternal. It transcends time, space, and dimension. When we can figure things out and when we can do the hard work, roll up our sleeves and say, you know what? I need to take five minutes a day to meditate. That's all, maybe that's all you need. Start somewhere. Right. Bring in the angels. Uh, you have a house where you feel like there's a room that's negative or something's going on. Bring in the angels. The more you request the angels, the more that they will come also. It's like building muscle. So, you know, doctors have practices. Lawyers have practices. I say this all the time. Why can't we have a spiritual practice and do what's right for you? Exactly. And, and that's where on the empath thing for people to understand, if you're doing something that this should be a huge flag. If you're an empath, but you feel bad, you are walking away and you have to ask people to forgive you because you've been around all these negative people. You shouldn't be doing what you're doing. Not only that, meant to live that way, and and the Bible even tells us we're supposed to be in joy, in peace, and welcoming. But if we're constantly putting ourselves in something that brings our energy down, you need to look. You might have some forces moving around in your life that you really need to face and say, "Ooh, I have brought these into my life." You know, I want to also shift the subject a little bit, and I want to talk about kids. Kids? The children who are very, very much an empath, they're absorbing all of this energy to the point where, and I see this a lot, they can't function in school. I'll have parents, they'll say, oh, my kid has been out of school for two weeks now. They can't function. If you keep coddling that personality, you're not helping them. We need to give them strategies. Okay. They're, they have so much anxiety because and, and let's face it, schools are just a big cesspool full of just emotional baggage, right? Especially in the middle school at times. You need to equip your kids. How do you deal with it? How do you just kind of steal yourself? How do you 
encounter these relationships? How do you deal with the bully? How do you deal with this? How do you deal with that? Instead of letting them stay home and just let their anxiety build. I see this a lot because there's a new breed of children out there that are hypersensitive to energies. And it's a really tough place for them to be, but we have to teach them they're going to be okay. At the end of the day, they're going to be okay. And they have to be equipped to deal with this. They have to be able to, if they if it's going to school, dealing with friends or no friends. So a lot of times no friends are a big issue because a child who is is an as a serious empath may not have friends because they tend to have emotional outbursts. Right. Because they can't handle their emotions. They need some type of counseling or therapy. And I, this is the work that you do a lot of. I do too, but this is your forte more than mine. Give them the opportunity to learn how to get some coping skills. You know, I, I can't agree with that more because we forget. You know, there, become, there came a thing here for the longest time that a parent's job is to protect their kids. Yes and no. Your parent, as a parent, we are the ones primarily responsible for teaching our kids coping skills. And if as a parent, you are turning to anger, you are turning to things. There are things that I did as a parent when I was young, only because I picked up bad habits from my family. Okay? And there's no such thing as perfect parents or perfect children. Oh, no. you know, I... My wife and I were laughing. I told this young lady, she's like, I, I'm scared. I don't know what to do. I said, yeah, you know, you didn't give birth. And the next thing, push one more time and the manual will come out. It doesn't work that way. You know, oh, there it is. You know, oh, this was pretty short. So you got a problem. You know, it's, it's one of those things. But we should be coping. And that's the problem with kids having kids. The kids yeah. never learn to cope. Now they're having kids. So how are they going to teach their kids to cope? And if it's always running home or running away, we have a problem. And I, it's, it's funny that you would say that is I watched a video today about this young psychologist going, when this five-year-old or eight-year-old is having a meltdown, that's what they're supposed to do. Kids are born to reach out, find boundaries. They're testing everything, Okay. And instead of going, go to your room, stop it, because now you're, you, you're allowing your child to interject negative energy into your space, and you get angry, and we deal with it in the wrong way. Instead of just dropping to one knee, and this guy, I, I was like, this is amazing, he, the way he presented it. So I don't want to take this concept from him. It was him, but it was perfect. Dropping down to one knee and opening your arms and going, it's going to be okay. I'm here. What are you feeling? What's happening? Because a lot of these kids, there are emotional issues. There are biological issues where different, um, different, uh, I'm having one of those senior moments. Uh, the chemicals not, in the brain, different yeah, things like that. We're not one size fits all. Right. That, that something is, you know, off and it does have to be correct. Not every kid needs to be corrected with pharmaceuticals, okay? But some do because there is a chemical imbalance. And I've become, you know, I firmly believe that's become the thing take my kid to the hospital and medicate him, you know, because I don't know how to deal. Well, you don't know how to deal with it. As a former public school teacher, the school and the parent were the first ones to want to medicate this hyperactive kid all the time. And I remember one time I had this kid, I, I forget, I'm not going to say the grade, but it was an elementary school grade. And teachers talk, okay? They do. Like, oh, you've got that kid this year, first day, right? I'm like, what does that mean, right? And I, I'm not going to, they're planting a seed in my head is what they're doing, but I'm not going to let them. So I got that kid, right? Right. So when I got that kid, I struck a deal with them on the day one. I said, if you feel like you have too much energy, I'm going to give you permission just to quietly get up out of the room, 
go take a lap on the racetrack and come back in because he's very, very hyper kid. You know what? I never had a problem with him. He was, he was the best, but my, my classroom was next to the track also. So I had that at afforded me, luxury. Yeah. Um, but I just said, just go take a lap. No questions asked. But if you abuse it, we're done. And you've broken my trust in you. There was never a problem the entire year. Right. And it's thinking outside the box. How do you handle these situations? There's no one prescription, no one size fits all. So as an empath, be creative about how you're not going to absorb somebody else's energy. Be creative about how you're going to block it. Be creative about how you're going to own your own power. That's what this comes down to. How do you own your own power? Right. How, if you keep surrounding yourself with negativity, how can you then be complaining about being happy? It's like hanging out at the bar and saying, I wish I wasn't a drunk. Well, stop hanging out at the bar. At least step number one. There's way more than that. But you have to take those steps to realize what is right now within my control to change. And, and this impact thing, again, we all want, you know, when you ask people, what do you want? I want to be happy. Yeah. You know, nine times out of 10, people will tell you they want to be happy before they tell you they want to be rich. If you go into it, they're like, being rich would help me be happy. But most people are not say, well, you know, being rich would make me happy. You know, well, guess what? What are you doing to help you with that? And, you know, because there comes a time where many things in our life is a choice. And we yeah. don't want to take ownership for it. You know, yeah. there was a point when I was doing tarot shows, you know, where I was reading tarot. One of the things I got tired of was these young ladies and some young men uh, from overseas, different things popping in going, oh, what about, I'm, I met a guy. Is this my relationship? And I would start telling people, I don't know. And I'm not going to read that. Because what's happening is, and I saw this, and I think it happened years ago, and it started happening with computer and computer games. Everybody panic, take a breath. I'm not going to blame computer games for everything out there. <laughs> but I'm going to blame parents. Yeah. Because when certain computer games came out, hackers came up and they built what gamers call God codes. So you could learn how to break into the game Get everything, beat the game without working for it. And you know what? This, this mentality has started to spring forward and people are looking to spirit for life's God codes. Yeah, well, tell me and what I'm supposed to do. You know what? You're supposed to live your life. You are supposed to go out, not give your heart and soul to somebody on the first three dates, not give your virginity, not forgive everything out. It's why they call it dating. And you have to explore and listen to those elders in your life and things like that. God doesn't want you to have, he wants you to learn. Because one day you're going to have a daughter, you're going to have a son. And what are you going to do? Teach them to go to a mystic in order to learn about life? Well, you know what? There's a mystic on every corner now. And, and you get the wrong one. You marry Ted Bundy. You know? You know yeah. I, I, spiritual, a big part of spiritual bypassing is people who are looking to have their future told to them. It's very dangerous. And I don't do futures. I do a lot of other things, but I don't do futures because futures are fluid. Right. If I were to say you're going to meet a tall, dark, handsome man on a subway, what do you start doing? You're looking at all the tall, dark, handsome men in the subway, right? And passing I, over. Who could be your true soulmate or whatever you want to call it. But at the same time, I robbed you of your future potential. Right. I literally stopped at the end of those broadcasts. Stop doing it. I'm not doing it. Yeah. And what I would do would be like, okay, let me ask, what do you need to know about getting into a relationship? And nine times out of 10, they didn't like it. When I turned it back on them, what I'm seeing here is you need to love, learn to love yourself first. Stop looking for somebody to make you happy. 
I'm a firm believer, and, and the whole thing about empath comes down to this too, that one of the leading problems we have in this country, and I believe the world, but I'll go with this country, is codependency. Not just on drugs, alcohol, substances, gambling, things like but on each other. I need someone else to make me happy. And until you can find that, you'll always be relying on someone else for your happiness. So therefore, your empath, you're opening yourself up because you're not finding joy with God within yourself. You're having to find it through other people. And guess what? And you know what? Take yourself out on a date. Go out and have dinner with yourself. Go out and do have an adventure with yourself, right? Right. Exactly. I agree wholeheartedly. I agree. I have no problem with that. I like, I love doing that. I love going out and exploring things. I'm by myself or whatever. That's fine. Um, I do a lot of travel for work and stuff and I will make sure I make time to go check out where I'm at. Right. Right. I may not know somebody. I may know somebody, but take yourself out. See what you like. See what you don't like. <laughs> right. Would you want to date you? That's a heavy question. <laughs> You know, that's a heavy question. I remember when I was younger, I was married, but there was this officer that I was working with, this police officer who was single. And this lady was, he had, he was just completely infatuated with them. And she was single. I'm like, why don't you go out? She's like, you date him. And I'm like, what? And she's like, you date him. Before, <laughs> and, and I'm sitting here going, right now, if I was a girl, or if he was a girl, would I go out with her? The answer was not no, hell no. <laughs> you know, I'm like, no, you know, yeah, okay. And you know, she passed that on to me. Before you go fixing people up, if you can look at me and say you would date me, then you can refer me to him. But if you can't look at him and say, you know, if I was a girl, I would date him, stay out of it. <laughs> that's know, a good tip yeah <laughs> because again we're trying to shortcut for everybody we're trying to help somebody yeah. and you know what he needs to walk his path absolutely he needs to find out what's working for him and what's not working for him because mm -hmm. other than that it's somebody fixes it all the time yes and i also want to switch the subjects again one more time no please i want to talk about our animals okay. our fur friends our fur babies okay because they also pick up our energies. Oh, absolutely. They can feel us. And doesn't your animal deserve to have the best you? It doesn't mean every day is going to be a bed of roses. But think about it. And so a lot of times, especially dogs, will get these benign tumors all over their body. What are they absorbing? Right? And it's not that you're causing this to happen, but just kind of, it's just a, something to think about. What are they absorbing from you? Because our, our animals have jobs. They are of service to us. We are of service to them. And we do reincarnate with one another over and over again. I've had a dog that I've had several lifetimes. I know that. So make sure that while we're, while we're dealing with this empath energy and getting stuck in the mud like this, that we're not transferring our energy to our beloved animals. And ask the angels to help you. Bring them in. I am feeling, you know, I just, I was, you know, at school, I was at work or whatever, and I just feel awful now. I'm asking the angelic realm to help me relieve that pressure. Right. Take and you know what? That goes into what we were saying before. You owe it to your family, those in your closest circle. And I'm not a pet owner, but I've done a lot of work and had pets and things like that. We're just at a point where we travel now and I love being able to go out and not, it's not fair to an animal because I have my own beliefs about animals and what they should and shouldn't. I agree. All that stuff. Mine are never left alone. But just like you don't want, you know, if you're, if every day you're coming home and asking your animal to make you feel better, you're becoming codependent upon that animal. Mm-hmm. Rather than I've got to take, maybe I should come home and make my animal feel good. You know, 
But we do that with our children. We do that with our husbands, with our wives. We do that with our, it, it's just crazy because we don't, we want everybody to, uh, to make us feel better and we forget, you know, there's some of the stuff I need to learn to cope with, you know? Exactly. So. Exactly. And the, the key is, is that we need to be aware, cognizant that we're doing the behavior. That we can stop the absorption of energy. We don't need to be that energetic sponge. It doesn't serve us. It brings us down. It lowers the vibration. It actually thwarts the ascension process. And that's one of those words I really don't like to use because everybody's running around saying, oh, I'm in 5D, I'm in 5D. Uh, you know, let me punch you in the face and guess what? Mm, you're back down with me. <laughs> yeah. Stitches hurt, period. Right, yeah, no matter, yeah. And I got no it. matter I got how it. elevated you are, the stitches hurt. Um, but just know that, <laughs> okay, I got the sarcastic spiritual side of me too. That's like, okay, I love it. <laughs> hide it. <laughs> I, nah, don't hide it. Let that puppy out because I am sarcastically challenged too. I've just been very good at it today. But no, I, like I love that. it. I love it. You know, that's a great T-shirt. Sarcastically challenged. Sarcastic, or know, maybe it's the name of a band. Yeah, that'd be a great maybe band. It's the name of our show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so but no, you're right. That, I mean, yeah. So no, let it go. Because again, we're not, and and I think the other thing too is in this with that empath. We're so worried about making everybody happy. It's not my job to make everybody happy. It's my I job know. to make me happy. It's not my job to make my wife happy. That's her job. But it's my job that once I'm happy, how can I help you learn to be happy? And that's one of the things we pick up on it or whatnot. And that's true empathy. That is understanding. When you know when your spouse, your children walks in, ah, somebody had a bad day. And that's yeah. what I'm saying. We've all been given that gift. Just a lot of us won't slow down and get out of our own way and perceive it. And it's just, it's more, there's not so much impact as there is perception. And it's two hugely different things. Absolutely. It's like you have to put the oxygen mask on yourself first, right? Yes, ma'am. First of all, airplane law, oxygen mask on you. I got a question for you. Okay. Yeah. Because we talked about it and we kind of talked around it, but I'm going to ask you because I know you have dealt with shadow work and dealing with dark entities, things like that. And people need to understand these dark entities are real. They are, we kind of want to ignore, no, everything's love and light and everything. Well, you know, then you have to acknowledge there for everything, there is an opposing, an opposite reality. There is. I deal in the, the dirty underbelly. Right. So, all the time so someone that's dealing with the fact that i keep bringing home somebody else's energy there's a leak in your force field okay so we have many different force fields one is our home our home environment is supposed to be our safe environment right right want to do is we want to start to raise the frequency easier said than done again a spiritual bypassing oh my frequency is so high right um there's easy things to do to raise your frequency, to build the barrier. You want to create a barrier so nothing can enter you. Think about the old Star Trek movies where, you know, Captain Picard's like, oh, shields are at 90% and everybody's running around having a good time. Oh, shields are at 20%. Now you got these critters coming into the ship and stuff. We're like that, okay? It's the same concept. So when we can go shields up, a really easy tool to use is simply Mozart music. If anybody out there has ever looked at the work of Dr. Masuro Emoto, Hidden Messages in Water, something like that. Um, if you haven't exactly looked at right. up. Certified in sound healing. So, and just went through, it's amazing. Okay, so it's, so there's a lot of stuff on YouTube but there's claims to be high frequency music. But is it, how do you test it? You talked about the frequency machine, right? To test it. 
Right. Guaranteed, I could create something on YouTube and say, oh, this is high frequency, but I could be lying to you. So and, you and I could be when I recorded that. It's all about my intention that I put into it, and you're allowing that to come into your head. So thank you. I'm glad you're saying this. So look at Dr. Masaru Emoto, and what he did was he studied the energy that we put upon water crystals. He used Mozart music. So who use what's tried and true. The energy of Mozart music ended up creating these beautiful symmetrical water crystals. We're mostly water. So if you find that your home or you're having frequency issues, if you're feeling like there's sludge in your house, if you're cleaning your house and it still feels dirty, there's a psychic soot energy going on that needs to be cleaned out. And I deal with that and work with that every day. Happy to help anybody. But one of the things we can do is when you leave on your computer, play an eight hour track of Mozart because that energy doesn't have boundaries. It starts to clean and clear. If you have something in your home, when you look at it and it does not bring you joy back to Marie Kondo or whatever, get rid of it. You don't need it. It's right. just stuff. The you know, I was in college one time and I was, I love my horror books. I, I love my paranormal shows and horror books and everything else. Not even going to get into the right, wrong, spirituality. Wrong. I just, Stephen King was my man, you know? And I picked up a new book when I was in college. And it was bad as Bible calls, by the way. And at that point, and I'm reading this book, but there was an image on the back. To this day, I, I can't remember the exact image, but that image made me uncomfortable. Where I literally picked up the phone, and I was in Missouri, and I called my dad, and I didn't seek counsel guidance from him, because like I said, our relationship was so hot and cold. But there were certain things I'm like, Dad, I have this book. I'm reading it. But I keep being drawn to the back page and and i mean the back cover so i'd close the book and go back there and it's just creepy or whatnot first thing he said was get rid of it Don't you know crash. this is how the dark side gets to us the other element and this is especially true boys more than girls violent video games they're very addictive for a reason. You're bringing violence into your home. Yes, it's through a video game, but these dark entities will travel through those etheric lines to get in your home. So if you're dealing with something, there's a reason why somebody who's addicted to violent video games, they're dirty, they don't shower, they don't clean their room. They're sitting in a dark room. There is a reason for that. Those games need to go. It's an addiction. It's not any different than a drug addiction or an alcohol addiction. No, it's, anything to excess is it's a very serious addiction. And if what happens is these beings and entities start embedding themselves within the soul of your you or your child's body, right. and it affects the whole household. And that's not to say everybody that's playing a get a video game or everybody that's a gamer is addicted it's, to having dark entities. If you're able to keep your, your high vibes, your energy up, you play them and you can say, okay, we've had enough. It's time to go outside and play, go to the gym. My son is prime example, you know? But when you're into that. And you and, can't let it go. And you can't let it go. There's a problem. There, it's very dangerous. It's I, honestly, it, it wears the shield down especially with the violent video games, the murder on murder, et cetera. There's a lot of dark games out there. Not every game is like this, but you're bringing the violence into the home. You, you'll you see the shift. It's like, where did my kid go? That's the problem. Yeah. And it's really hard to undo it because these things, all they need to do is go to a friend's house or here or there, and they're addicted again. Yep, Exactly. Because, again, there's a dopamine effect with that, too. Mm -hmm. You know? One of the things I remember, too, in feeling and what we put in. Remember last week I closed my whole banger, you know? But yeah. a lot of times what we put in is what we get out. So my wife and I were over in Orlando at Ikea. You know, love Ikea. Ikea, got to get some meatballs, and then we got to go look for all the weird furniture and things like that. Stuff you didn't know you needed. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Oh, I can do that? You know, she's like, no, you can't. Okay, thank you. Um, <laughs> you know, um, buzzkill. But yeah. we're up there, 
And this was right after the Las Vegas shooting with the guy shooting down on the crowd. Mm -hmm. And if you remember the news, the radio stations, everybody was playing over and over and over again. Audio, when there was an active shooting going, and all you could hear is people hollering and the gunshots. Mm -hmm. Now, when I left police work, I have guns. I love my guns, things like that. Do I have my concealed weapons permit in Florida? No. Okay. Do I feel the need to walk out and carry it all the time? No. Starting to change with the way the world's going and Florida stepping up and saying, as of July 1st, we're going back to, you don't have to have permit to conceal carry. Everybody can do it here. Um, but I was upstairs with my wife on a Sunday afternoon. Place was packed. In my head, all of a sudden, I'm hearing this replay yeah. of these gunshots and people screaming. I wasn't there. I can't say this was PTSD, okay? But it had been played so much for the first time in my life. I'm looking at my wife, and she looked at me and said, what's wrong? I got to get to the front door because I feel like all of a sudden I'm a sitting duck. I'm a fish in a barrel. It's a form of programming, right? And it's what I had allowed myself to hear over and over and over. And it starts coming out. And we don't know what's happening when it's happening. But you figure it out. When you figure it out, boom, there's the key, yeah. right? So we got outside. And I, I said, we don't even have to get outside. We got downstairs where I could see the, and the exit was mine. I'm like, okay, we don't have to leave because it's a whole bigger murder world to get back in and go through. <laughs> and I'm, I just need to see that exit. But I told her, and when I sat down and told her, I'm like, wow. And you know what? That was one of the first times we said, that's it. No more news. We're all done. Because it's just no need to replay that sorrow. And that tragedy over and over. And I unwittingly let that get in and it became an earworm for me. And I had no control when it popped up. Yeah. So that's why I'm begging people, you people that are impasse, we're saying we're impasse or whatnot. Be careful. What are you opening yourself up to? And you have the power within yourself to close that door. Absolutely. If there's anything anybody can take away today, it's you have the power. Awareness is key. Once you have the awareness, you're now karmically responsible for that information, which gives you the power to handle it. It's practice. We're not going to do it overnight, practice. but it's practice. So, yeah, thank you, Rob. I really appreciate this conversation today. This is great. Me too. Me too. I can't wait to see what we come up with next week. I like the fact that you're talking about frequency. So many people like change your frequency. One of the conversations I'd like to have, especially as becoming certified in sound healing and for those people, this doesn't mean eliminating God or doing anything. We're made, uh, God made us the way we are and made everything in this world to have frequencies. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were made by Him. Without Him was not anything made that was made. So if we know we are emitting frequencies, everything is a frequency, He gave us answers to use. And so just like you said, oh, yeah. be careful about just going on to YouTube and trusting, you know, Billy Bob Brubeck is telling you, I'm a shaman, and this is a root chakra, you know, frequency. You don't know what's embedded underneath that. You don't know his attention, and do you even know this person? So Things like that put hooks in the soul. Yes, it does. Yes, it put does. Put hooks in the soul, and I kind of want to leave people hanging with that because I think this is an important concept. What are you bringing into your life? How can you clean yourself up spiritually? Because when you clean yourself up spiritually, you're helping to shield yourself and you're closing that energetic door so you're not causing, you're not creating harm within yourself. Correct. Correct. And I think that that's it. So I would at some point I want us to talk about frequencies. I've got my steel tongue drum, different things. All like right. People are like, what? You know. I think we'll, I think that'll be fun. 
yeah, we, you know, we have a good time. We can have a good time. We do. Can't wait to get to Florida here in a few weeks. Oh, I can't wait. For <laughs> we're going to have fun. I, you know, we're going to have fun. So we'll yeah. figure that out. So uh, thank you so um, much for us doing Thank you. And thank you all for listening. We really appreciate it. And drop us a line or an email. Um, we're grateful that you chose to spend time with us today. Absolutely. You'll find our links, our description, no matter whose channel you're listening to. Both will be in the description below. And folks, bang on what you put out, you get back. So thank you. Thank you. And we can do a All right. wow, it's like something glued. I feel like what's that from something about Mary? And now <laughs> I'm trying to do it in <laughs> totally leave this in in the beginning. <laughs> you know, so uh, but there we go. So